A villain is nothing without an evil laugh, and these bad guys are the best of the best. From powerful sorcerers to killers in clown makeup, we've ranked the scoundrels with the most devious chuckles in movie history. Whether he's being played by Tim Curry in 1990 or Bill Skarsgård in the late 2010s, Pennywise the Dancing Clown is a truly terrifying villain. Both versions of the character are pure nightmare fuel, but Curry's Pennywise definitely has the edge, and it's largely thanks to his unforgettable laugh. <laughs> this demonic clown makes a habit of popping out of nowhere in 1990s It. That's plenty scary by itself, but it's downright mortifying when paired with his taunts and tittering. Pennywise's low, echoey chuckle comes straight from the belly of the beast, shaking the legs of his victims and paralyzing them with fear. He doesn't even need any darkness or shadows to do it, as he's just as terrifying in the middle of a bright sunny day. Curry's top-notch delivery adds an extra layer of menace to this transforming cosmic horror, as his gestures help to sell his laugh even more. Interestingly enough, Curry didn't catch the IT producer's attention at first. Roddy McDowell and Malcolm McDowell were considered, but nowadays it's hard to imagine anyone but Curry in the iconic role. James Bond's villains have always had over-the-top laughs, so when the spy franchise was spoofed with Austin Powers, Dr. Evil's chuckles had to be truly silly. Luckily, this parody of bad guy Ernst Blofeld was played impeccably by Mike Myers, who pairs a goofy giggle with a now iconic gesture and a thirst for world domination. Of course, Dr. Evil doesn't work alone. He's always surrounded by his minions, and they get in on the hysterics with similar enthusiasm. Whether they're truly entertained or just trying to avoid being fed to the laser sharks isn't important. These laughing sessions can go on for comically long periods of time, with no one knowing quite the right time to stop and move on. <laughs> <laughs> An unnamed ex Saturday Night Live writer once claimed that Dr. Evil was a caricature of SNL creator Lorne Michaels and his mannerisms. Myers brushed it off, however, claiming that the villain was inspired by Donald Pleason's portrayal of Blofeld in 1967's You Only Live Twice. Either way, Dr. Evil's laugh is perfect for such a goofy personality. You don't need to have seen all of Aladdin to know that Jafar has plenty of dastardly plans up his sleeves. Just look at the guy. From his serpent staff to his facial hair, this dark sorcerer is clearly comically evil just from a glance. His talking power, Tiago, doesn't exactly inspire confidence in his overall trustworthiness either. Jafar often makes a face like he's sucking a lemon, appearing less than pleased at the prospect of merely being the Sultan's advisor and not having control of Agrabah for himself. In fact, he only seems to crack a smile when there's a potential scheme about to take place. But when he does, maniacal cackle usually isn't too far behind. So when Jafar finally gets his hands on the magic lamp and the genie inside, he doesn't stop himself from letting it all out. Get the point! <laughs> <laughs> Jafar's truly menacing delivery makes it seem like he's an unstoppable force once he's used his first two wishes. But when he's tricked by Aladdin into becoming a genie and is trapped in a lamp himself, he's not laughing anymore. Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers tend to go about their business in silence, but Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street possesses the dark heart of a showman. He doesn't just want to invade dreams, he wants to leave a permanent mark on his victims with the blades on his fingers and his well-timed wisecracks. The lengthy Elm Street franchise contains several moments of Freddy cackling like the nightmare monster he is, but the original 1984 film features a laughing monster at his most frightening. After Tina Grey falls asleep next to her boyfriend, it doesn't take too long for Freddy to invade her dreams and attack her. Fighting back in the nightmare, Tina reaches for his face and grabs, so Freddy's skin falls off, revealing the grotesque skull behind it. <laughs> Freddy isn't afraid to be mutilated for a gag. In fact, he finds it hilarious. There's always something twisted tickling his funny bone, and he's not afraid to let everyone know. The demon Pazuzu doesn't like to pay rent. Instead, it decides to take residence within 12-year-old Reagan McNeil in 1973's The Exorcist. The hostile takeover doesn't sit well with Reagan's mother Chris, so she calls in the experts to exorcise the demon out of her daughter. When the priests visit, Pazuzu turns the affair into a high-stakes slumber party complete with hellish games and infernal tricks. Father Merrin and Father Karras try a few different methods to free Reagan from Pazuzu's clutches, but the entity refuses to let go. It mocks her efforts as the poor girl's body begins to suffer. Moans of pain turn to laughs and back again as Reagan throws cabinets open and spews green vomit all over the place. 
<laughs> the voice of Pazuzu belonged to the late Mercedes McCambridge. As director William Friedkin revealed in a behind-the-scenes video, McCambridge prepared for the role by swallowing raw eggs, smoking a ton of cigarettes, and consuming alcohol to get into character. No wonder she comes across as so unhinged. Stanley Kubrick's The Shining remains one of the most haunting films of all time, mostly due to Jack Nicholson's mesmerizing and disturbing turn as Jack Torrance. Over the course of his stay at the Overlook Hotel, his personality shifts from family man to unstable lunatic as the hotel's ghastly influence seeps into his being. Naturally, his slip into insanity is full of uncomfortable laughter that terrifies his wife Wendy and son Danny. The entirety of The Shining is an acting masterclass from Nicholson, but one of the most impressively chilling moments comes when Jack decides to get a drink. Upon greeting the ghostly bartender Lloyd in the otherwise empty gold room, he laughs at his own joke in a truly eerie fashion. A little slow tonight, isn't it? <laughs> at this point, the movie isn't even halfway finished. But it's abundantly clear that Jack has already plunged headfirst into the deep end. As you'll see once again further down this list, no one can do a villainous laugh quite like Jack Nicholson. No matter what film he's in, Willem Dafoe continues to be immune to bad performances. He's mastered the art of the movie laugh, providing several iconic guffaws for his characters. But none of them are quite as diabolical as Norman Osborn's in the 2002 Spider-Man. Known as Green Goblin on his more destructive days, Osborn alternates between something of a scientist and a chaotic supervillain. Much like the classic characters Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Osborn struggles to contain the monster that is the Green Goblin within him. In one memorable scene, he looks at the mirror and sees his evil side in the reflection. As they discuss their plans to get Spider-Man to team up with them, the dark version of Osborn can't help but chuckle as his eyes light up with pure wickedness. Imagine if he joined us. When the foe's Green Goblin finally returned after 20 years for Spider-Man No Way Home, it was clear that he had lost none of his evil spark. Fans will often excuse all sorts of horrible crimes from their favorite movie characters, but many people draw the line at animal cruelty. That's what makes Cruella de Vil, as played by Glenn Close in the 1996 live-action remake of 101 Dalmatians, so universally hated. Her motivation is both extremely simple and extremely despicable. She wants to kill Dalmatian puppies and turn their fur into a dress. In her opinion, there's nothing wrong with skinning dozens of beloved pets as long as you end up looking fabulous. If that's not dark enough, Cruella finds any objections to her bloody plans simply hilarious. When someone brings up the topic of the Dalmatians, she breaks out into wide-eyed berserk fits of laughter, as if there's no funnier concepts than animal welfare. It would be as if I were wearing your dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to imagine a more loathsome character than Cruella de Vil. Where is John Wick when we need him the most? Every iteration of the Joker boasts his own trademark laugh, so it's difficult to choose just one actor to represent the clown prince of crime. More of the versions of the character played by Cesar Romero, Heath Ledger, and Joaquin Phoenix all have impressively sinister laughs. Jack Nicholson's Joker from Tim Burton's Batman has them all beat. Every time Nicholson's Jack Napier walks onto the screen, something truly iconic is about to go down. Whether he's roaring in delight while murdering mobsters, or after yucking it up after vandalizing priceless artwork, the villain possesses a serious case of the chuckles. That said, the Joker's most unnerving laugh occurs after Jack falls into a vat of acid and visits a budget-friendly surgeon in the hopes of fixing his face. The surgeon holds a mirror for Jack to see his new face after the operation, and while his moans sound like tortured wails at first, they morph into truly unsettling laughter. <laughs> <laughs> From Bela Lugosi in 1931 to Nicolas Cage in 2023, countless people have played the role of Dracula on the silver screen over the years. In 1992, director Francis Ford Coppola took a stab at the classic story with Bram Stoker's Dracula. And not only did it end up being one of the most visually stunning movies ever made, but Gary Oldman's portrayal of the iconic vampire turned out to be truly delectable. Keanu Reeves may not give the most convincing performance as Jonathan Harker, but he's at his most impressive when he's been terrorized by the evil Count. In one early scene inside Dracula's castle, his vampire brides drink Jonathan's blood until they're interrupted by their master, who gives them a baby to feast on instead. As Jonathan screams in terror at the infant being devoured, Dracula simply can't help but laugh. <laughs> Out of all the movie Draculas, none of them have a diabolical laugh quite like Gary Oldman's. 
Darth Vader is an incredibly iconic and imposing villain, but he's not well known for his sense of humor. In the original Star Wars trilogy, the evil laughter is instead reserved for the main man pulling Vader's strings, Emperor Palpatine. Played by Scottish actor Ian McDermott, Palpatine specializes in conniving and poisoning the well as he plans to eliminate the Jedi and create a new galactic order. The terrible tyrant loves to play political games and manipulate his subjects, and when he believes that he's finally won, he's not afraid to show off his sinister chuckle. It's especially unnerving when Vader brings Luke to meet the Emperor, as Palpatine soaks up the effects of his plan coming to fruition. Soon I'll be dead, and you with me. <laughs> Palpatine may not have the galaxy's most intense laugh in Return of the Jedi, but McDermott was able to show off his range as a younger version of the character in the prequel trilogy. As the newly crowned Emperor of the Galactic Empire, he has a much heartier guffaw as his evil plans unfold. If someone crushed your sibling to death at a building and stole their shoes, you'd probably be upset too. But the Wicked Witch of the West holds a particularly intense grudge against Dorothy and Toto in The Wizard of Oz. After a tornado whisks the Gale farmhouse away from Kansas and delivers it to Munchkinland, the girl and her dog land directly on top of the Wicked Witch of the East, and naturally her sister isn't too happy when she finds out. Her threat to Dorothy is one of the most recognizable movie quotes of all time and is followed up by the most unforgettable cackle in film history. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too! <laughs> the Wicked Witch of the West was played by character actor Margaret Hamilton, who caused a big break after putting on the green paint. She may end up melted by Dorothy at the end of the film, but the Wicked Witch will always remain one of the most iconic movie villains of all time, and she has the best laugh, too.